Hi, so today I'm going to show you how to remove the corrosion from your original Game Boy's battery terminals. I bought this Game Boy broken on eBay for 20 bucks um, in order to make a Raspberry Pi Zero Game Boy, you know, with an emulator. And then I realized that although it doesn't work, it's probably because the battery terminals are extremely corroded. And this can happen if the Game Boy is sitting around for a very long time with batteries in it. Batteries leak out, essentially. Uh, and a chemical reaction causes this corrosion, but it's really easy to clean. And most of the time, your Game Boy will start working again. So, first thing you're gonna do is remove the back case. There are six screws that you need to remove. And you might get lucky, and you can use a normal small screwdriver. But for some of these Game Boys, Nintendo put these Y-shaped security screws on here. And you'll need a special screwdriver for that. They're only a couple bucks on Amazon, so don't worry about that. So remove all these six screws. All right, after you've removed all six screws, you'll see that the two halves are connected by this ribbon cable, similar to an iPod if you've ever worked on one of those. You just want to very carefully wiggle it out without damaging it. There you go. Now your two halves are apart. Now what we're going to do in a minute is we're going to remove these contacts because you can actually pull them out from the outside. The whole reason to take the case apart and ultimately take this logic board out is so that we can get to these two, which are actually soldered directly to the board. So you can't get to them from the outside. And we're going to be scrubbing them a bit. So we just want to make sure that we can do that without uh, damaging anything in here. And removing it is the best way to do that. Now this thing is 20 years old, almost. So, uh, you know, be very careful with it. Uh, there are two screws here and two screws on the audio port that you need to remove. Right, I'm going to do that. These are a little bit smaller than the other ones to so try to keep them separate from the case screws so you don't get them mixed up. that I can lift the whole thing out very carefully it's all in one piece here it's the entire Game Boy so I'm gonna set this to the side over here don't lose that power switch all right there's uh, some kind of shield here looks like it's where the game slides in probably to shield the electronics or to shield the game itself um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that in because it's metal so Right. Like I said before, if you really don't want to take the case apart, you don't have to. You can get to these from the outside, but opening the case up is so easy. And it's much easier to remove these contacts from the inside than it is to try to pry through on the outside. Either way works though. I'm just going to take my screwdriver here and I can actually push down. There's a very small pin in here you can see. A little clip. I'm going to push down on it and slide this guy right out. All right, and do the other two. There's another one. Flathead might actually work better here. And there's number three. All right, it's much easier to get to from the inside, so I recommend just taking the case apart. Now the other contacts, which are also corroded, are on this part, but we can very carefully clean these um, without using any kind of liquid, because they're right here, and we don't want to damage the electronics. So we're gonna soak these in distilled white vinegar for about five minutes, and then lightly scrub them with a toothbrush, and that'll get all this gunk off, and then just put everything back together. Right, after we soak the contacts, we're gonna rinse them off with water and then put them in some rubbing alcohol to remove any impurities from the vinegar. So in this one, I'm gonna put some white distilled vinegar. And then in this one, put a little rubbing alcohol. Smelling pretty bad. This 
one. A little drinky poo, Bo Bandy. All right, so put these in the vinegar. We're gonna let it sit for about five minutes and we're gonna use our toothbrush to scrub gently and just remove anything that you know, help the process a little bit. Now to clean the contacts that are attached to the board, I don't wanna use messy brush and vinegar, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of the rubbing alcohol, a paper towel, and just very carefully scrub off a little bit of corrosion here. It looks like they used a different kind of metal for these contacts, a higher quality one that doesn't seem to be as corroded or impacted, which is nice. So shouldn't be anything crazy here. Just gonna clean whatever I can off here. And the paper towel is actually abrasive enough to remove this without getting an enormous amount of liquid on it. So looks pretty good. Now, before you reassemble, just take a quick look at your board and look for any kinds of uh, bloated or exploded capacitors or just weird things going on. Even if you don't know that much about electronics, you can usually tell if something's off. That way, when we reassemble it, if it still doesn't work, we can at least have an idea of what else might be wrong with it. Like if a capacitor is exploded, it's pretty cheap to find a replacement, solder it in, really easy. Um, so while you have it open, just take the opportunity to do that and also see how it works, which is kind of cool. As with most things, reassembly is the opposite of disassembly. So we're just going to go ahead and reassemble things in the reverse order. You're going to put the uh, terminals back in. Remember the spring goes on the negative part of the battery and this little angled part goes down and just push them right in and they'll clip into place. Look at that. Still a little bit of corrosion on there on the edges, but it's not a big deal. Um, the important part is the terminals themselves and that you remove the majority of the corrosion so the batteries can make a good connection. All right, first put the power switch in here. And then the logic board goes in. Push these terminals down through here. Super easy. And now we're going to reattach these four small screws we took out earlier. Now we're going to go ahead and reattach our ribbon cable very carefully and just push it in. I actually did it before I started this video. Uh, the pins should actually be showing by about a eighth of an inch so it doesn't go all the way in. Just be careful not to bend it too much or damage it. All right, and then we're going to put the entire case back together. Nice and snug, nothing sticking out, and put our six screws back in. All right, so everything's back together. So now is the part where I put the batteries in and hope that it works. So again, I bought this Game Boy intending for it not to work so that I could use it to um, basically remove everything inside and replace it with a Raspberry Pi Zero and a small LED screen and uh, run RetroPie, which is an awesome Raspberry Pi video game emulation platform. And so if it doesn't work, still, at least I can use it for that, which is its intended purpose. Look at that, totally works. It's got some lines on the screen, but there's actually an easy way to fix that as well. And I'll do that in another video. So be sure to subscribe and we'll actually be launching our um, Raspberry Pi Zero Game Boy Guide relatively soon. The, the website is howchew.com. Um, you can actually find a link to it in the description down there. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. All right.